Hi friends, National Education Policy NEP 2020, a teacher's perspective. I would like to see this NEP 2020 in the eyes of our teacher. And while studying this, right, I have taken four aspects into consideration. The aspects are entry of the student into this education system, what education will be given to the student and how the evaluation is made and what are the examination patterns that are being uh, introduced here so that the knowledge base and the uh, skills of the students are being assessed. Right? Uh, for this, let us see how it has been done. And here, I would like to say, uh, tell you that I am fortunate to study uh, my start my education in the year 1968 when the first education policy was introduced. Though the idea was conceived by uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, he constituted a committee that is Kothari committee between 64 and 66 they studied the system and uh, submitted the report. Though it was conceived by him, uh, it was introduced later by uh, Srimati Indira Gandhi in the year 1968. Later, after the gap of uh, 18 years, uh, then policy has been modified by the then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi that was in the year 1986. So from 68 to 86, 18 years. And then after six years, another again it has been modified by P. V. Narasimha Rao. And then after this, the present uh, sub policy that is 92 to 2020 means 20 plus 8 to 28 years. So after the gap of 28 years, the present policy has come. Now let us see that. And uh, before that, let us see what were the foundations for the national policy and education which was introduced earlier, the previous one. For the previous one, the foundations are the fundamentals are access it must be easily accessible that's one and also equity it must be irrespective of caste and creeder uh, creeder sorry uh, it must be easily accessible and equity these are the access and equity are the main uh, foundations or fundamentals for the np the earlier uh, policy now uh, the present or the what change that we see in the present one is uh, the present one proposed by uh, the team of uh, narendra modi sri narendra modi is so uh, this is national education policy the change that you can notice here is national policy and education becomes national education policy policy and education becomes education policy np becomes nap now here again for this the fundamentals are uh, same that is success and equity that is also same along with that they have taken quality of education also as the one of the criteria for the as a fundamental com component and then affordability it must be easily affordable look at this access and affordability so that means the easily easily accessible and also easily affordable right so affordability uh, has also been taken into consideration here so affordable means there is a cost involved in it then also they have taken accountability it is not just quality afford and affordability it must be fixing the responsibility on the system on the person who has given the education on the system which is giving the education so quality of the education that the system gives and why is it affordable or not and what extent it is accountable so these by five the mantras the tantra has been uh, designed let us see how tantra will make a uh, change in the system in this nap 2020 now let us see how this panchatantra will evolve into the reality so they say that education must be less content oriented the content should be less what you give is less right and that less content material should be able to make the person to think critically you so that you can find out what is good and what is bad and then be able to solve the problems so for the content should be less and it should make the person to be critical thinking thinking critically and solve the problems and along with that it should be creative in nature it must inculcate the creativity and innovation. So the person should be in a position to innovate. So the education that you are giving must be creative and innovative. And along with that, there must be, it must be novelty. There must be novel, novelty in the system. No, it should be very new, something very new to the uh, student. And then it should be easily absorbable. The education that you are giving should be easily absorbable. When you say creative, innovative, or novel, uh, novelty oriented, it, that should not be something which is very abstract. When we say creative, it should not be something abstract. It must be easily absorbable and there must be change in the system. Then how can you, you know, uh, uh, give uh, innovation to the student? How can you educate the person with innovation, creativity and novelty? And what is that? What is that? They say that this will be possible only when it is multidisciplinary. 
it is not one discipline which can get, tell this it must be multidisciplinary so then the question that arises is in what method that you give the education what is the pedagogy let us see the methods of education they say that it must be experimental the student must be in a position to experiment it uh, and find out from the hands on experience and it must be total it must be holistic whatever you do it must be completely total or total education it must be holistic and integrated there one should be interconnected to another one another it must be integrated and it must be total and discovery oriented the student must be able to discover what is missing where it is gone how it is gone by performing the experiment and at the same time that uh, methodology that you are giving that you have been taught the student will be taught must be learner centered the methodology that you that they are going to employ here must be uh, the student must be able to study and for the teacher he must be experimental holistic give the holistic education and it should be integrated discovery oriented learner centered and then discussion based it should not be a monologue it must be a discussion and then above, along with that it should be flexible the method should be flexible so and then enjoyable so these are all the methods that the teacher mon teacher must adopt and also student must be comfortable with it and he must enjoy it then what curriculum is that what are the curriculum the curriculum they say that they teach arts all forms of arts crafts handicrafts culture of the society of the community humanities games sports the physical fitness languages literature along with that science and maths these are the subjects that a student will be knowing arts craft culture games humanities language fitness literature science and maths all these will be taught then if a ta with the taught then what this education will build in the student it must build character in the the way the student the character should be good it should build ethics with him it must be rational he should be able to find out which is good and which is bad compassionate have a compassion with the people with whom he will be caring right and then it must be all round well rounded and more useful to the student and apart from that along with this it must have a give a fulfilling employment so the whatever he gets that will lead to an employment that is self satisfying self content so that is the intention of this nap 2020 so they have the four pillars education that they have given the giving the methodology that they are adopting and the curriculum that uh, been introduced to the given to the students and what it will build are the, the one which will matter most to the nap 2020 that's what they say let us see how it will be materialized with all mantra and tantra what is important is yantra yantra is a teacher so all these education policies will be made to happen made to put into action by the teachers teachers are at the center stage of uh, this education policy and they need some changes in this now let us see what changes they want in this uh, policy and what they say is at all levels recruitment has to be made the all levels recruit the very best and brightest person to the teaching community the teacher has to be best and brightest so then the question that arises why this best and brightest has to come to the teaching profession right they will go somewhere else they will go to research and other other universities right so here what they say is come on by ensure that the teachers will get the livelihood respect and dignity the livelihood they are getting should be respectable and it should give as a dignity in the community with the community and also autonomy to them so the moment you give the autonomy to the teachers the best very best of them will come out to bring out the brightest from the students that's what this nep 2020 says so if you have the autonomy does it mean that it is full freedom no there will be some slight regulations there will be basic methods of quality control to maintain the quality of the teachers so there will be uh, very uh, systematic and basic methods of quality controls are been maintained and then that will fix the accountability on the teacher so there will be accountability for the uh, whatever the teacher does right 
so if you do well if you excel in your uh, performance then you get the incentives rewards promotions and recognitions if the teacher is excelled then you get this and also been promoted if not you won't get promotions you won't get incentives you know won't get anything and at the same time if you do not deliver then you are accountable and you have to explain why you are not produced why you are not delivered so that is most important in this uh, nap 2020 then another question that arises here is already these teachers are burdened with other non-teaching work like sensors and at the same time the moment they uh, settle at one particular place they will be shunted out to the other place so now what this nap 2020 says is there is no transfer for the teaching community fraternity no transfer unless until they are promoted so till the promotions there is no transfer so they have to be there in the same place for a longer duration so that they can be cut connected to the parents and to students so once they are connected to the parents the rapport between the parents and teachers becomes more conducive to send the students to the school and thus all the students all the students who are of, the, of that age will be in the schools not at home or somewhere else so that is what this nap 2020 says so excellence is most important the excellence will come from the best and brightest person will be there as a teacher that is what this nap 2020 expects nap 2020 says that there will be best and brightest person in the teaching fraternity this is what nap 2020 expects from the teacher Yes, a teachers are one side and other side students all the students should get best from the teacher and the quality education must be provided to all the students irrespective of the residents whether they are, they are in the remote place or village wherever they are they how to get the best education and they at the same time historically there are certain communities who are totally marginalized from the best educations possible they also to be given mind you the quality educations to be given even to the marginalized historically marginalized people and also for the socio economically disadvantaged people if the economy if they are very poor even for to them they have to get the quality education it is not the only the convent education it is not only from the premier institutions education has to be given it has to be given to all the students all the quality educations to be given to all the people all the students of the community and even the unrepresented groups there are we might have heard that uh, i am the first graduate of our family of our group of our community that should not happen all should get right so everybody uh, should be getting the quality educations and that becomes a leveler uh, so, so that socio-economical uh, stability will be maintained and economically they are start strong with the social status they will be gaining from the educations that's what in all through this nep 2020 two words are repeated again and again inclusiveness and equality equality the education must include all the people of the community all the people and best education and equally they have to be treated so inclusion and equality being repeated again and again hundreds of times it is repeated here in this nap 2020 hope and wish that is been there in the way the nap 2020 it is there actually and at the same time one more thing for the student is right they have the advantage what advantage they have is they can choose which subject to be taken for the examinations which subject to be taken for the examination means they can eliminate or exclude some of the subjects they have studied as uh, as not for the examinations that a choice also be given and at the same time in the first 15 years of study that in the school uh, school will be, uh, will be for 15 years in that first 15 years only five examinations are there uh, grade 3 5 8 10 and 12 so it only five examinations are there so that is not been burdened students are not been burdened with every year annual examinations it is only five exams for now 15 years of study and along with that other proper question uh, uh, is right these uh, especially school education in that school education they provide nutritious breakfast and lunch as i told you earlier breakfast plays a very important role because nutritious breakfast can uh, make the person happy and when the person is happy he can imbibe many things and good things right so that is what is been uh, given uh, to give a very good education education to all the people of the community so hope uh, teacher and a student uh, becomes a wonderful uh, part of nap 2020 let us hope for that okay sir if mantra tantra yantra are in the order then what is your format what is the format of education for the students how the students uh, or kids will be given education 
Now, in this NEP 2020, the entry level will be after three years. When the kid becomes three year old, uh, he will enter into the education system. Immediately after three years, he will enter into the education system called a foundation course. This foundation course will be for uh, five years and this will be in uh, three levels. The foundation course itself will be in three levels. All the kids in the age group of uh, those who have completed the three years should enroll into uh, foundation course and uh, here first two years will be in the of course all will be in Anganwadi or preschool or madrasa there will be two or three level first level will be for the kids with the four and five years and after that next to the third year is called as preparatory class that is one year prior to the class one or first standard or grade one and two so grade one rather so grade one prior to grade one is a preparatory class that is called as preparatory class and after the sixth year of the kid then in the seventh year the kid will get into the first standard and uh, the, in the eighth year it will be a second year right so there is no examinations during this period no examinations all will simply come get into the next level so there will be three levels in this foundation course now either to what used to happen is these three years of course that is a preparatory class and as well as Anganwadi a preschool this used to be there only in the cities or in the towns right where there are privileges classes are there so that will be in the form of either LKG or Montessori or other forms of educations but uh, the schools or students who are there are kids who are there in the villages were deprived of it they used to enter into the education system only at, for the first standard that is grade one so that is used to happen at after five years ten months that is the normal uh, course that used to happen now now according to this NEP 2020 immediately after three years all the kids of this country should enroll into foundation course and after five years the next level is called as preparatory level and that is for three years and this will be uh, standard three four and five it is called as grade three four and five and during that time the kid will be nine year ten and eleven year respectively uh, after, next to that is a middle school so this is preparatory actually Pre preparatory is equivalent to the primary primary used to be one is one to five earlier that is present now the middle school will start uh, from grade six six seven eight are uh, six standard seven standard eight standard will be the middle school or middle level and by that time the kid will be 12 13 and 14 year and after this next course is secondary that will be for four years and here grade uh, 9 10 and 11 12 there are two sets one 9 10 and 11 12 and the present of puc or junior college first puc second piece will be merged with the school that will be called as secondary level and that will be for four years so that means the uh, uh, this nep 2020 give the education in four levels first five years foundation next to three years preparatory level next uh, subsequent three years middle level and next four years will be secondary level there will be 15 years of uh, uh, schooling will happen uh, in this NEP 2020 and they have to ensure that they are ensuring that they are telling that in this NEP 2020 no kids who are registered here in the foundation course or all the kids must be registering for the foundation course and they continue to stay uh, till the secondary that is till 18 year of themselves right so that is what 15 years of education must be given to all the kids then is it not given now let us see the status what is what is the present status for uh, the kids who are in this age group now present status uh, that is grass enrollment ratio is right so the kids who are in the age group of 11 to 13 right uh, that is in grade 6 to 8 the, that is a present status as per the um, records of uh, the UNESCO, it states that only 90%, 90.7% 90 of the students will be in the school, remaining almost 10% will be out of the school. That means the student kids who are in the age group of 11 to 3, the 10% of the students in the age group of 11 to 13 will be out of the school. Next, for the next grade, that is from 9 to 10, who are in the age of a present age, rather, well, that is 14, 15 is different here. So that is uh, the age group of 14 to 15. So out of uh, the the remaining flock only 79.3 percent will be in the school remaining almost 20 percent will be out of the school here 10 percent is out here 20 percent is out so that means as the grade increases number of students who are quitting or going out of the school will also increase dropouts will also increase right next between 11 to 12 that is present puc first and second puc uh, those who are in the age group of 16 to 7 the how many students will be there in this college the only 51 percent remaining 49 percent will 
be out of the college right from 10th to 11th there is a sudden change there only 50% almost 50% will be in the school or in the studies whereas remaining 50 will be out of school and then if you take the next group that is in the age group of 18 to 20 right to 20 uh, that is those students who are kid uh, taking the uh, degree right those kids are those uh, boys or girls in the age group of this how many will be there only 26.3 percent will be in the education system whereas remaining 73.7 percent are totally i can say approximately 74 percent of the uh, boys and girls will be deprived of their degree educations so if 74 percent of the people of this young generation are deprived are not taking the education means then what how the country can prosper how it can develop only meager 26 percent are becoming graduates remaining 24 now 74 percent are out of this system so in the until they brought into the education system it is difficult so what this uh, education policy says that till this grade which one till 12th grade right by the year 2035 it must be 100 percent it must be 100 percent whoever gets into the system that is from the supply of foundations to the 12th grade all the students should be in the education system and for this at least 50 percent for the degree course at least 50 percent of this gauge group should be in the college and thus we can prosper and uh, for this uh, the guiding principle they say that indian uh, knowledge the rich heritage of ancient India will be the guiding light for the, this NEP 2020. Let us see how this guiding light will throw light on all the people of this community and give a better education in this model. So this is about uh, NEP uh, 2020's uh, schooling. So the task is 100% uh, attendance 100% admission all along the schooling then how do you uh, account for that how do you maintain that so after three years all the kids should uh, uh, admitted to the uh, school the, that is to the foundation level so all should enter into the education system then how do you achieve this hundred percent education the main problem is in the rural area many people are not able to feed their kids that when they are not in a position to feed them uh, them then how can you ask them to send uh, to the school then what this NEP says is already there are there is uh, Sarva Shikshana Abhiyan, right? Make use of the teachers and also hire counselors and convince the parents that we will provide the food. We provide the, not only the lunch, lunch is being provided now. Along with the lunch, we will also provide nutritious breakfast that is really good for your kid. So what is the, the whatever the nutrition that has to be required, right? Uh, to the uh, early age kids, right? That will be given. You tell them that and convince them to send their uh, kids to the school that is what this NEP 2020 says so here one addition is nutritious breakfast being added uh, to the uh, lunch which is already there in the system and at the same time there are socially economically disadvantageous group so they are not in a position to send their uh, problems to kids to the schools because of many social problems associated with it if this uh, number if the socially SEDG groups are more in number in that particular region you declare that region as a social special education zone so declare it as a special education zone take the help of the center and the state right so the concertedly in the concerted manner both should work together to resolve this problem and uh, see that all the kids in that particular age group in the study group should be in the school so that they have to ensure in some cases there may need uh, some other assistance say for example if they want to have the local variations in the schools say like that like like they may have to call it as a gurukulas or patashala or madrasa or even homeschooling encourage it see that they are in the system that is what if need be if at all the people are coming out with uh, the schools right allow them right and make that uh, opening up school is less restrictive allow the schools to uh, be uh, coming up in that area and see that it uh, the, for the opening of the schools it is less restrictions been imposed on them that is what they say uh, for uh, having all the kids to be in the school and after the fifth grade right if at all if they need be right because of SEDGs and uh, SEZ or groups right start uh, free boarding schools so like uh, now they are schools which are there start free boarding schools so that the kids uh, can get into that boarding school and study there that is what it will recommend right and at the same time in the secondary education if the kid wants to um, drop out in between right so they have the exit policy at 8th 10th uh, 
10th hour you can they can exit uh, from the system and then come back that is possible that flexibility been given in the education of the schooling uh, school education so that is from uh, the age of 4 to 18 this flexibility is there flexibility and the advantages are being um, provided uh, with NAP so that is asking the government to provide this in case even after this if the kid is not in a position to attend the school physically right they cannot attend the school physically develop the mechanism what mechanism is that open and distance learning so that means distance learning has to be there that means now here the whatever the means that are there either radio or tv or now actually what they say is smartphone is very essential so have the smartphone have uh, the dis distance learning the open and distance learning for this the two uh, um, divisions that is national institute of open schooling for the system national level and for the state state institute of uh, open schooling has to be uh, developed in such a way that this open distance learning ODL uh, will be more easily accessible to all the people, all the kids of this country and this is what this NEP 2020 expects, wish that is happening and that will happen and kids will get the education. Now after the entry, retaining them in the school is most important. Now how it is done? So how the education is given? What is the education? Uh, methodology what is that uh, education that you are giving what you are giving is most important and how give, you are giving is also important what you are giving uh, to the schools in the foundation level and other levels uh, is very important here the education will be the in the, the uh, uh, foundation level education will be play based activity based and discovery based so the focus will be on uh, the uh, will come back to this right so it is basically play based activity based and discovery based so and it will be through stories singing acting playing and seeing right so you make them to involve so it is experiential the students or kids must experience what they are doing it so it there must be a group activity right it will be the, the telling of stories singing poetry songs art and the languages so here one of the analysis shows that the kids can learn the languages in the age group of 2 to 8 very easily so if uh, at the, the age group of 2 to 8 2 to 8 uh, the kids can learn the language different languages very easily in fact i know one kid who is four year old who can speak very fluently in four different languages kannada uh, hindi uh, telugu and uh, marathi oh, sorry uh, gujarati so all the four languages they it, it can uh, talk uh, with father it, it speaks in uh, telugu mother gujarati and speak with us in Canada and in uh, school speak in uh, classes it she speaks in uh, English as well right so that is what uh, that uh, girl of five year four year will do that so it can learn the languages very easily that is what this NEP says introduce the language at the early stage itself and it is a three language formula right there will be uh, three languages being taught here all across uh, the country that's what they say then after uh, this first two years in the preparatory class introduce this literacy and numeracy so that means alphabets are to be introduced right and numeracy that is numbers are to be introduced and it must be play based it is not just making them to uh, do lot of uh, mathematics right matter of addition subtraction so with the help of the plays and songs they must introduce the uh, alphabets and the numbers then in the for, for grade one and uh, two right so in the grade one and two right what you have to do is that is a uh, fourth and fifth year of the foundation course the alphabets language numbers simple counting addition subtraction identification of colors shapes uh, by playing uh, saying uh, by story uh, telling right they should be able to learn and write this right so here they introduce this uh, for writing in the year one and two right with the help of uh, um, this right that playing and uh, uh, doing right so they will be uh, in a position to do this right and the focus should be given in such a way that they learn good behavior courteous to the other people teachers parents and other uh, fellow classmates and they learn the ethics that is most important i say 
and also hygiene person and public hygiene when the kid goes to the uh, toilet or uh, other places right how you can she can maintain herself or himself and also with the other people how they can how to that that has to be that attention or focus has to be given by the teachers who are there in the foundation course and cleanliness teamwork by playing with them one another so there must be teamwork and the cooperations are to be um, uh, uh, introduced of course that will obviously uh, get into the kids when they are playing with the team in the team right so that spirit has to be built here that's what they say here then this education is called as early childhood care education this education which is introduced here is called as early childhood care education ecc this is the first time they have introduced uh, this methodology then the next question that arises to us is what is the medium of instruction because uh, this india itself is heterogeneous from south to the north they speak different languages different way of uh, interactions different food culture right then the, what will be the medium of instructions it clearly states that it must be in mother tongue or the local language low mother tongue and local language of uh, should be the mother medium of instructions and and again there is a red area wherever possible uh, teach till 8th grade also it is not till only 5th grade it has to be till 8th grade this uh, medium of instruction should be mother tongue and local language minister of HR, uh, human resource and development has told this uh, uh, this we leave it to the state government so we don't know what the state government will do if it happens in the mother tongue or in the local language definitely thought process will happen uh, easily and that definitely uh, can uh, grasp the kid can easily grasp the concepts and uh, things very fast but we do not know about this because they, they say it is flexible and it, that will be left to the state government we need to know that because if they stick to this it is definitely wonderful right next for this what is the methodology what is the pedagogy to teach this 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 involves a different art for the uh, teachers to do right because they have to tell poetry stories songs of course they are doing it but there is a language concept involved here and that language has to be introduced at the early stage before the uh, third grade that is before the age of five, eight right these kids must be in a position to tell right uh, must be in a position to uh, uh, speak in those languages so that pedagogy is very important here so methodology is very important so now the question that arises is who will do that so for that it are this nep 2020 has requested ncert to develop it and also so once after developing it it that has to train the teachers so training of the teachers are very important the train the teachers at the early childhood education plays a very important role this is very very essential part of the kid because they the kid will be learning languages and also uh, liter uh, what uh, alphabets and uh, numbers and uh, in future for these teachers essential requirement is they should uh, pass uh, eligibility test teachers eligibility test it is uh, right or national test agency what they conduct the teacher eligibility test so that will be used as an uh, tool and not only that that will be uh, what one of the criteria for the uh, teachers to be selected and along with this their kids uh, the teachers must uh, uh, take up the classroom demo classroom demonstration they ex should excel in it because in the previous uh, video uh, slide we have seen that only best teachers are to be employed this best teacher has to be recruited so only after classroom demonstration and interview the teachers will be selected in in year after that's what they say so this is a very important uh, phase of the kit so let us see how it will be how it will take the play, uh, shape because here the language kind of part is involved in it and already there are uh, voices against uh, uh, imposition of hindi and the three language formula but here i believe we are even without hindi also that there could be three languages but uh, how they implement is very important india being a diverse country language plays a very important role and it is very sensitive also and here uh, three language formula being adopted all along the education that's what they say and already there are uh, some uh, voices against uh, hindi imposition there should not be any compulsion like that actually uh, as per this law uh, 
I mean, as per this NEP 2020, only it says three languages, right? But I don't think it has, it can uh, have, Hindi has one of the option here. Even uh, two Indian languages, other languages, other than that can also be taken, taken, I believe. So here, the medium of instructions, it's very clearly says that it is uh, mother tongue or the local language. So that plays an important role. And the study of literature also been uh, explained here in this uh, early studies. And uh, it clearly says that between two to eight, the languages are to be introduced so that the kid can easily learn it. And the language has to be studied through an experiential method. It is not by just imposition. Uh, it is by the experiential uh, that has to be enhanced through uh, singing, uh, poetry, theater, and art. So by this, the languages are to be uh, taught or uh, learned by the kids. And for this the pedagogy, the methodology of teaching plays a very important role. And at the same time, uh, it says that uh, as it makes uh, medium of instruction as in the mother tongue, right? The students who are studying in mother tongue or on local language, from grade six, they have to study maths and science in both uh, uh, local language, that is mother tongue or local language, and English. So it, there must be bilingual, bilingual uh, study uh, should happen from uh, sixth grade. Uh, and uh, by the grade uh, 10, ninth, by ninth standard, all the kids who are studying in my home language or uh, mother tongue must be able to speak both the science as well as other subjects in their mother tongue or home language and English. So this, by this, uh, that can enhance the communication and the language proficiency as well as of the subject. So that is their intention. So from sixth, it will be bilingual. Then the question that arises is, who will prepare the question? We will prepare the books. The books for uh, science and maths at higher level, right? Both in the local language or mother tongue and uh, this one or that English. So NCRT has been given the task. So they have to prepare high quality bilingual textbooks. So that is their task. So that's one thing. And another very interesting thing that is there is uh, that all kids, every two kids have to participate in a fun project or activity uh, on the languages of India. The languages of India, they have to present a project or an activity. So that is uh, importance also given and that can happen between uh, grade six and eight. So right, the next is uh, another important thing is all students have an option, whether private or public, have the option to study two, uh, at least two years of classical language in, in, of India. So two years they can study the classical languages of India, uh, again through the experiential method or innovative approaches using the technology. And so that if the student wants to continue this education, that is uh, they want to pursue the graduation and uh, post-graduation in language, so this becomes a key aspect. So they can start from the sixth grade itself, six to 12, they can opt uh, two years for the study of these languages and thus they can continue that uh, in a secondary as well as in the university level from the middle level that is sixth grade to the secondary then it can be continued to the university uh, right uh, to my undergraduate course in language and also post graduation so that option has also been given so selection of the language as uh, one of the op um, optional been given right here and then Next is Sanskrit will be there all along uh, from the beginning as an option and along with that the classical languages like uh, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, uh, Malayalam, Odia, Pali, Persian, Prakrit uh, like this uh, all languages uh, classical languages have been uh, given so the kids can choose it right so that's what and uh, this is about the Indian languages but there is a scope for them to pick the foreign language at the ninth grade. So from ninth grade, they can take the foreign language, Korean, Japanese, Thai, uh, French, German, Spanish, Russian, or even uh, Mandarin, that is Chinese language. So that can be taken at the secondary level, that is from the ninth grade. And so that their interest in the uh, uh, education, if you want, they want to continue the studies outside uh, the country, so they can do so. So that is possible here. So this is about the importance of education being given in the early education scheme. right? Now let me see the, how education would be at a higher level. Uh, we have seen in pre primary education level, right? Now let us see it in a higher level that is in the grade of three, four, five, that is a preparatory level. So here the pedagogy is given here. Pre preparatory is it must be interactive classes. The class must be interaction. It, it must be uh, uh, like a dialogue, right? So there must be interaction with the, more interaction should be kid, with the kid. And the textbook books will be introduced at this level. Third, fourth and fifth grade, that is third standard, fourth standard and fifth standard, that is how we normally call here, right? And here, uh, the reading, writing, speaking of the subjects and also physical education has been given an importance 
along with art and languages and science and mathematics are been given right to more more and more uh, problems and numericals have been worked out to uh, need to be worked out here at third fourth and fifth uh, uh, grade and as i told you earlier the medium of instruction till fifth grade must be in the local language so it must be in the micro local language that are uh, mother tongue so that must be the uh, medium of instruction so till here it will be uh, mother tongue are the local language if possible it has to be extended till 10th grade of uh, 10th uh, sorry 8th grade must be extended till 8th grade so this is it and for this pedagogy and the textbooks have been will be uh, developed by ncrt so this is what they say for the preparatory education right so this is about the preparatory education education and they will uh, that is uh, till 5th grade right next comes the middle level so middle level education so that will be through the pedagogy is learning and discussion there will be more more and more discussions here and to the discussions they will be learning the subjects so this must be that to, must enhance the, the critical uh, thinking of the kids right so it will be 6th 7th 8th grade and by that time the age of the kids would be 12 13 and 14 respectively so now here the subjects are um, science uh, subjects are science, maths, arts, social sciences, humanities, and they have introduced vocational courses and coding. This is the new addition to this uh, educational system. Vocational courses are to be introduced at sixth grade itself. Year-long vocational course are to be introduced, and also coding, right? About the present uh, circumstances, the present uh, local, I mean, uh, local and global uh, conditions uh, clearly says that coding has a very good importance because of the development in artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, allied fields right this plays a very important role and it could be taught because there are examples here look at this uh, there is one guy by name uh, Tanmay Bakshi uh, at the age of 14 that is uh, when, he, when it is when at the age of 14 he he was teaching coding to other kids he was teaching machine learning to other kids so that was the ability of this boy right so that means the kid can learn at the early ages there are many examples there are many uh, kids who have done this in the early early ages right so another example is our own this guy is from canada of course he is a boy of indian origin but uh, he is there in canada and he has published books on coding right coding and machine learning for all ages he has done that and we are here we have our own guy um, a person by name Suhas Gopinath. He is a Bangalore boy, and he has he has become a CEO of a company at the age of 14. Right, he has registered that company in America, uh, but uh, being in India, he has registered that company, and uh, the company that has registered in America was not even known to his parents, and it's again a software based company it was a web page developing company global inks is the name of the company and uh, he is a ceo the why you have given in hindi is this person is famous all along the length and breadth of this country so this is possible and it has he has done it during this age group so that means this age group will be very very uh, what um, molding moldable age so by that uh, we can easily introduce these vocational courses or coding and other courses but doesn't mean that there are uh, no challenges right especially introducing vocational courses really a big challenge for the uh, kids uh, so institutions as well right so they have uh, they have, what they have told is so there must be hands-on experience of sampling of important vocational crafts such as carpentry electric work metal work gardening pottery making it pottery making etc so this has to be decided by states and local communities and mapped by the local skilling needs so it depends upon what needs are there for the particular area right on the basis of it they will decide it so whether it's a carpentry or electric work or metal work uh, or pottery making so local needs and as well as uh, for that the state has to take the call on this so it has to start at uh, grade 6 itself and that means when the kid is 12 year old it must study this so that means to say that so the NCRT will frame that syllabus, frame the form methodology or National Council of our uh, uh, National what is that, uh, Educational Council, right? So this will also uh, will help in this regard in the developing the uh, curriculum and also uh, curriculum for this, right? So this National Curriculum Framework uh, for 2005 will also uh, uh, tell, uh, throw some light on this. So there are challenges. So the challenges which are there are, especially in... Uh, having this uh, metal works or gardening or from pottery making right so need to have a workshop or if you want a garden uh, if you want to study the gardening so where you get the garden right so if the institute doesn't have if it is very much in the thickly populated cities then the uh, challenge of having a garden 
this is another important uh, criteria so there are uh, uh, what uh, challenges involved but uh, for this especially for carpentry and electric work the present b ed graduates right so as per the uh, rule what it says is by uh, next uh, uh, 2030 all are to be Uh, b ed graduates that is a four year for integrated b ed being introduced right so they have to be ed graduates they may not have this uh, skill right if they don't have that skills then it is difficult so in such cases what they say is hire local candidate local uh, trainer or uh, trainers are skilled personnel as a trainers so this is what they say and in the school right so whenever we have this hands on experience as vocational course and coding then what will be the number of uh, uh, students for every uh, teacher that is a uh, pupil teacher ratio so for every one teacher there has to be 30 students so that is the limit they have fixed uh, for a socially economically uh, disadvantaged group of containing uh, sector right so though for this sector number of students should be less uh, for every teacher it must be around uh, should be around uh, maybe around 25 for every teacher so this is the pupil uh, teacher ratio so for every 30 people one teacher uh, in uh, general whereas for scdg sectors it will be between it will be 25 for every 25 students one teacher so this is about uh, the education been given in a preparatory and middle school let us see in the next level that is secondary that is very important so it is very much clear that uh, they are giving more importance to the contemporary subjects so contemporary subjects plays an important role so the development of artificial intelligence and its design of thinking holistic health and organic living uh, should be there in the curriculum that's what they say so if that is the case if the contemporary lab subjects are there right then why the uh, vocational course which was there earlier didn't pick up so the gray area they have identified is the deliverability was very less very poor and the planning was very poor so hence uh, that would not uh, succeed in the earlier cases because uh, the vocational course was there earlier and that was not successful because of poor deliverability that mean to say that the present nep 2020 clearly specify that the delivery they will deliverability of this course must be very very good or very interesting and must uh, have have impact on the society and by the and also on the student so that is what it requires and handling of the subject like holistic health so this is very important because there are a lot of stress involved on in it so maintaining uh, holistic health that means both uh, personal as well as physical health mental as well as the physical health is very important for that stress has to be need so there must be basic training in health uh, including uh, preventive health mental health nutrition personal and public hygiene and first aid that is uh, that will also to be included in the curriculum that's what it says so as will be a scientific explanations for detrimental and damaging effects on alcohols tobacco and other drugs so this aspects ought to be introduced and taught uh, here in the curriculum that's what it says here in the nep 2020 because this plays a very important role because these are the challenges been faced by the teachers so that plays a very important role uh, in the education system threat right? maintaining uh, the holistic health holistic health as well as uh, teaching the contemporary subjects so that becomes a challenge right and next when it comes to the question of uh, secondary education here the education uh, for the secondary education uh, secondary school is so here it will be part as uh, uh, multidisciplinary right and uh, subjects is choice of the students so student they can cho choose any subject they want so and it must be multidisciplinary it is not only one subject right so for example here the students a choice of the subjects that is uh, which, which can enhance the greater critical thinking and attention to life aspirations what the student wants to be what is his intentions in life been taken here as a more a core subject so on the basis of it the student can choi choose the subject of his choice so uh, there is no uh, a hard separation between curricular extracurricular co curricular or even arts humanities science or vocational or academic course so you can choose anything any course you can choose right so you can choose any course say for example you can choose physics history accountancy music english carpentry so here it has i arts science uh, commerce some music all are possible and also vacation course even all you, this can also be taken but one caution here is right now if you are studying physics right mathematics is very essential right if you are studying accountancy if you should you should have the knowledge of uh, what uh, basic uh, business studies right so the accountancy commerce will go together so when you are choosing these subjects there must be a proper guidelines there must be provision for studying uh, mathematics either together or uh, 
uh, uh, in uh, the next subsequent or previous stages right so that uh, possibilities must be there right so then they are concerted so you if you are studying math physics you should have a mathematics as one of the subject otherwise it will be difficult understanding the subject would be very difficult right so that uh, that part is uh, that uh, uh, problem is there so they may give a pool of subjects for uh, uh, from the arts uh, commerce in the on the basis of credit so credit based uh, education where in which uh, this this many number of subjects in science this many in arts this many in uh, co curricular or extra curricular could be chosen and if it is made like that it will be good and one more important thing is every year all the teacher should undergo 50 hours of continuous professional development program because when you have this kind of uh, uh, methodology and uh, the subjects have been taught in the school right they must be proper training for the teachers they will be having uh, 50 hours of training every year right so, it, so that is very much important and at the same time here at the 10th grade they can, he can exit the person can exit and then come back so that is that possibility has also been given to encourage the students to take part in all the activities by experiential method so they have introduced uh, or increased to have science circles math circles music performance circles chess circles etc etc so these circles are been introduced either in the school or in the cluster level because in some cases it is not possible the vocational courses could not be uh, taught in a remote villages in such cases we can have the cluster of the schools right so that the cluster can have a, a normal common center right where in which they can give the training on the vocational courses that is also been encouraged right so the one having the clusters uh, is, that's one thing and having A, what, uh, a skilled teacher from one day te- one school to another school sharing their expertise from one school to another school being addressed here right so it is the one the teacher uh, working in a particular school can also uh, may also work in other schools right in that region uh, that is uh, the schools which are connected to one another through uh, uh, clusters so that the student will get the benefit so science teacher going there and teaching the science in other uh, schools a uh, commerce or uh, arts teacher coming to the schools and uh, teaching the commerce subjects so by that give and take you can have a good education that's what this nep 2020 stress upon let us see how it will get materialized okay after examination then how do you assess the quality of the student how do you assess uh, how the student is uh, faring and how he has assimilated the knowledge that you have inculcated so what they are telling is the primary purpose of assessment is not rote memorization skill but to one uh, but to one that is of more formative it is not whatever you are taught for an year has to be memorized and tested in 3 hours or 4 hours or 1 hour or whatever it is it should not be the case it should not be the summation of whatever they have remembered for an year been uh, produced in a 3 hours right reproduced in 3 hours by uh, recalling the memory memory it should not be summative rather it must be constructive and formative that is what they are telling it is more of a competency based analysis critical analysis critical thinking and conceptual clarity the student will have should have a clarity of the concepts and you should be able to analyze uh, with critical thinking that should be the uh, way of education so that has to be examined so it has to be more constructive rather than summative that's what this examination policy the nep 2020 says so the then the examinations are in the 15 years of study uh, in the first school level there will be only five examinations the school level the state school examinations will be in the grade 3 5 and 8 so that means first examination will be at um, that grade 3 so third standard so that will be 5 plus 3 eight years of study after eight years of study uh, the student will face the first examination then it will be in the fifth grade that is 10th year then after that eighth grade so okay uh, the 10th year of the kid I mean, what i meant is right then about after the uh, uh, eighth grade so there are uh, for eighth grade also there is examination so these three for eighth grade uh, examinations will be state level then the board level examinations will be at the 10th and 12th position in the 12th grade so 10th and 12th grade will have board level that is all india level examination so this will be only one board all uh, along the length and breadth of the board that's what uh, presently it says so here again 
what they say is even for the third grade they conducting uh, examinations that should test only the basic literacy numeracy and other foundational skills very essential and very elementary skills that are required for the uh, kid to understand the numeracy and literacy that is what they say and very important thing that we have noticed here is they want to avoid this coaching culture which is prevailing in the country either in the rajasthan or hyderabad or bangalore wherever it is this culture is picking up and may be spoiling uh, the system that's what they clearly says so this uh, the current in nature of secondary school examination including board examinations and entrance examination after 12th is harming this the uh, harming the education so this coaching culture of today are doing much harm so especially at secondary school level so replacing the valuable time of their uh, true learning and uh, because of this culture right so what they do is they pick only the specific subject uh, so that they can earn more marks so here learn a narrow very narrow band of material they don't uh, study the spectrum of the subjects that is required they study only the very narrow band very small uh, area so that they can earn high marks that so that has to be eliminated they say uh, as per the 2020 and another another important thing is there are entrance exams examination like jwe neat for this to crack this examination there are many coaching centers which are there so what they say is existing system of entrance examinations shall be reformed so as to eliminate the need for undertaking the coaching for cracking the examinations this has to be eliminated so the mode of examination has to be reformed in such a way that this has to be eliminated so this is a very a positive way a positive mood of this nep 2020 let us see how this will be done um, by the board right so it must be very constructive and very uh, formative right so that is what it is expected that's really good and what they say is this is happening mainly because we are giving too much importance to the board examinations so when you give too much exam to the board examinations so then scoring the marks in the board examination becomes more a uh, critical for the students so as a result of that they go in search of this culture uh, taking the private tuitions and uh, coaching centers right so instead of that eliminate the very high stakes of this board examinations so how do you do that do two examinations conduct board examinations up to two occasions right one during the any given school year do two examinations one main examination after that let him let them take another examination for the improvement so they can take both and out of which best of the two could be taken one of the best marks we have obtained in this best of the two could be taken best of multiple attempts could be taken so that the importance for this uh, coaching could be eliminated so that is the primary um, aspects they are telling right so there will be two they could be two examination one main examination other another one is uh, what improvement examination so if you want you can take otherwise no so there is two there are two pass uh, two uh, examinations which will be there in the uh, Uh, in the year given here so that is how you can uh, reduce this coaching culture that is what they say and another thing is make this board examination one uh, into two parts one is objective that is multiple choice uh, question based other one is descriptive so make it like that so if the examination of two parts then also you can reduce that's what the nap 2020 believes and another thing they are suggesting is at all four stages uh, where foundation preparatory all this are preparatory or uh, even uh, middle and uh, secondary school this is i am talking about uh, uh, this uh, school ex education at all four stages consider semester system uh, or the system that allows inclusion of shorter modules not need not be for 6 months it could be for 2 months or 3 months right so that you reduce the short make it as a shorter duration so that you they need not memorize the subject for an entire year so let us find out whether they have understood the concept realized what they have learned so that is most important then testing the memory rote memorization should not be there so that is what they say and to do this uh, they have formed a committee that is called national assessment center for uh, school education that is na Uh, CSE National Assessment Center for School Education to develop the guidelines to assess uh, for assessment uh, and tell this to the board as well as the schools. So they have formed this. Let us see how this will work uh, uh, and in uh, uh, online with the expectations.
elections of NEP 2020. In a way, this is uh, good, right? Uh, this is really a good for a good move by the NEP 2020. Let us see some more uh, radical changes that they are bringing in in the evaluation and examination uh, system. So here in this assessment uh, process, uh, I, as I told you, they will not uh, uh, take a rote memorization as the principle for the assessment of uh, the knowledge that the student has gained. So rather they say that it has to be critical analysis how the concepts are understood and how they would be able to analyze by critical uh, thinking, right? And uh, what they tell for the examination is for the assessment, each test should be a far less material, give less amount of um, material so that they can understand the concepts and there should not be any uh, pressure on the student uh, do while writing the examinations. So the pressure has to be distributed over the period of the time, right? It should not be on one examinations. So if you say uh, 12, 14 chapters are to be studied and the uh, test to be reproduced in three hours, it will be different. They don't know which chapter is very important for them. So as a result of that, they will, they will narrow down the choice. Instead of that, make it less intense. Less There should be less high stakes um, for the each examinations so that their uh, tension or pressure is reduced. That is what they say. So each test show must uh, must have less content for the examination. So that's what. And at, at the same time, for the mathematics, say for example, to do that, they can take two levels, right? They can offer mathematics in two levels. One is a standard level and the other one is a higher level. So that is if, you, if the student wants to take more higher level of mathematics, for the same standard, same grade, give uh, the same subject in two levels. So those who are at the eligibility level, they can say a standard level is an eligibility level. Let them clear it. And higher level, if they want more complicated, more analytical uh, thinking and critical thinking subjects, let them take this. So that option, give it. That's what this is. Actually, it is already there in the uh, CBSC board. And this is already prevailing in the board. Next. <clears throat> A student should have a choice to select which subject to be uh, tested, right? So that should they should have a choice, and they, they, that they have introduced here, right? So they can take which subject could be taken for examination. Say, for example, if they have taken physics, chemistry, and mathematics, if they don't want mathematics uh, to be taken for examination, only physics and chemistry will be there for examination. Maths will not be there. So some subjects need not be taken for evaluation. That is there. And another thing they are doing is instead of this uh, regular regular normal examination being conducted. So conduct more Olympiad competitions. In this Olympiad competition, a concept will be there. On that concept, the person will be working on it. He will put the whatever the subjects, the concepts that they have understood and think over it, think it in a innovative way, think it in a critical uh, way and come out with a novel um, um, uh, projects and that competitions and the winners of those competition uh, could be given a priority and these Olympiads are to be conducted in regional languages. The Olympiads are to be conducted in regional languages and they should be uh, conducted all across the uh, country and the winners of that and the people who have excelled in this Olympiad competition should be given preferences in um, the IITs, NITs and private and uh, uh, public uh, uh, universities for the admissions into undergraduate program. It is not the marks they are scoring it here. It is not the marks scored in the previous the respective examinations. Rather, Olympiad competitions should be taken as a yardstick to give an examination. This competition could serve as an uh, entry level examinations for uh, IITs, not the examinations, competition as an uh, uh, yardstick to for the entry into to entry into uh, enter into IITs and NITs and also other uh, public and private universities. This is really a good move by the NEP 2020. And again, <clears throat> Once internet connected smartphones or tablets are available in all homes and schools. So that means uh, it is very much evident that here onwards, most of the all the students who are getting into the education system must have either smart, smartphones or tablets or uh, the laptops, right? That is very much essential. That is so on the basis of it, there should be online applications with the quizzes 
computations and assessment so these are all the uh, different ways of assessing the quality of the student right so that could be done so that enrichment of the material would have to take place with him and then the online communities will be built and, and that can sh they can share the uh, knowledge and uh, benefits so now onwards so my smartphones becomes a reality now the chalkboard the chalk and the board uh, and a slate will go and that will be replaced by smartphones and tablets so this is a reality so this is very very important now another thing which they are thinking is why what about the three levels of evaluation one is self evaluation by the student student whatever he uh, thinks about himself he can give his own assessment self assessment say for example for 10 he gives a modest score of 8 right then compare it with his classmates uh, evaluation of this guy that means a peer evaluation we call this as peer evaluation so his classmate by knowing this person's uh, ability he will give marks as 9 out of 10 he is very uh, good enough to give assess his friend as a better guy than himself right maybe uh, or uh, whatever it is so he gives uh, 9 marks out of 10 so then his teacher will evaluate this fellow this guy is a student so he gives marks as uh, uh, 8.5 out of 10 so if you take the cumulative effect right it comes down to 8.5 so he was expecting 8 but he got 8.5 so by this also uh, could be taken as a yardstick for the assessment so this is the uh, possibility here in this uh, uh, scheme that is NAP 2020 so and at the same time for this a new national assessment center called PARAC that is performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development that is for the overall development PRAC been uh, established and uh, that will be established and these board examinations will, will have a less stakes so here it will not be the marks that you score in the board examinations rather the assessment made uh, by the PRAC right the scheme that will be developed by this PRAC that is performance assessment uh, review of what review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development that becomes a reality in the future how it is how it will do that is really a good question now let us see how the education will be in the national higher education level right so what will be the status of higher education institutions so what will be after 12th so that will be undergraduate programs so this undergraduate program will be multidisciplinary again so here the, the school the secondary is also multidisciplinary and this is also multidisciplinary and another important feature here is no special universities for any specific specific courses now you are having agriculture university medical university engineering university all will go there will not be any special universities for any specific course right it will be all will be multidisciplinary so they will have multidisciplinary and it will be a five, four year program i'll come back to this right so the entry education and evaluation examination level let us see that so entry for to this higher education would be through the entrance examination it will be through the entrance examination here again we have to take care the nep has clearly mentioned that they should eliminate the need for undertaking coaching for cracking examinations for iam they have the for cat examination they take co coaching for gate there is a coaching for uh, 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 sepuse uh, uh, neat or jwa there are coachings so what they say is ex eliminate that try to eliminate uh, that possibility of uh, uh, taking the coaching for cracking that entrance examinations and make it as a scholastic, a scholastic assessment test it is similar to sat a scholastic assessment test and this has to be conducted by a national testing agency nta and uh, that will be only one test for all the course all across the country only one course one examination on the basis of that score they can get into any course they want in the entire length and breadth of the uh, uh, country that is really good more right so because only one examination not much pressure so by that itself they can definitely prepare well for the examination without taking any assistance from the cracking industries uh, cracking industry of course it is a cracking industries so that is what they say that's regarding the entry 
and of course at examination the present uh, this is a model uh, we don't know how this will come out let us see model is this anyway now let us next is education what education it is as i told you it will be a four year program all graduate programs right of course for medical they are telling that we have to they have to look into that program right so it will be all graduation program now onwards it will be four year program and there will be multiple entry and exit to this system so here they can enter into that why how it is let us see that how the multiple entry and exit could be there let us see and it is be multidisciplinary there will be major subject and minor subject like whatever the, the courses which are there in honors bsc or ba honors similar to that they are proposing it here and it will be education and research based right so both education they are given more importance to education as well as the research so here examination uh, the course would be anybody can take any subject and anywhere in the country that's what it says because all the universities it is not specific to any specific courses so hence in all the university will have all the subjects so that is a possibility here right so this is uh, anybody anywhere any subject any subject is an uh, title is an a tagline for the cornell university us so anyway that is being followed here that being an ivy league institute they are also following the similar uh, what uh, role model of course they have taken it as a role model so here the course will be how this education will be given right in the first year right if they complete that first year again it is a multidisciplinary and that disciplinary it depends upon the student they can choose whatever they want right so it depends upon uh, the student's interest so if they complete after completing one year if you want to exit yes you can exit with the certificate so after completion of one year you will get the certificate so if you continue for another one year that is after two years if you want to exit yes you can go out and that will be a diploma course and after three years if we complete and go out then they will give that bachelor degree so after three years even if the student goes out then you will get a bachelor degree and if you continue and fourth year you can do either b ed integrated b ed course or bsc degree in a research degree in research that is possible either research or education and if you complete four year so either you get uh, integrated b ed course or degree in research so these are all the uh, levels uh, in the degree so multiple entry so if you want to take a break you can take the break and come back so at any time they can take the break and come back uh, to the education system that option been given here uh, in this NAP 2020 right so you will not low waste a year or so so here this is the advantage they have given and one more thing which you have given is right in this higher education they say that no student will be deprived of higher education because of financial inability so because of this they should not the student should not be deprived of higher education then what they suggest is if for that is the case what they say is the private higher education institutes should offer or will offer scholarships ranging from 100% to 25% for at least half of their students they don't say free education there must be 100% 100% means of course it is free 100% to 25% for at least half of their students so if they are having 100 students 50 students uh, should be if the admission level is 100 so 50 should be given the scholarships and it varies from 25% to 100% how this will be implemented and they say they will offer they will offer means they should offer let us see how it will be implemented in the course of uh, the journey let us see that then what is the nature of the universities that are going to come up it is really multidisciplinary as i told you it should be multidisciplinary at par with iits indian institute of technologies and indian institute of management right at par with that there will be merus that meru means multidisciplinary education and research universities so in a universities you can focus on either education or research so that is possible the merus will be there uh, that will be on par with iits and iams so that is what they are thinking and at the same time they want to ensure that under undergraduate program the present uh, whatever the 26.3 uh, enrollment ratio is there that has to be risen to 50% by 2030 that means by uh, in, in 10 years the admission should uh, jump from 26% to uh, 50% that means 50% of the student uh, candidates were in that age limit should be in the multidisciplinary uh, education and research university that is what their expectation is in this uh, with this NEP 2020 let us see how it will be as I told you 
value they are focusing more on the integrated programs basically education as well as the research so all the four programs are four year integrated course and in this four year integrated the bed program and this will be a dual major holistic bachelor degree where in which a degree in education as well as a specialized subject will be given the specialist along with the specialized subject they will be studying one year degree in this education so that is there in this uh, integrated bed course and this will be uh, very essential requirement for the teachers uh, for 2030 so beyond teaching the cutting edge at the pedagogy they will be studying in this integrated program the teacher of this education system must be grounded with they should know what sociology they know they should know history psychology science early childhood education that is most important because at the third grade itself they will be at the, at the, at the age of three itself they are coming into the school so they should know how to handle such kids so they will be knowing should know about it and also foundation foundational literacy and numeracy that is for the uh, three year old above to six year old kid how they have to handle so they should know that and at the same time they should be aware of uh, knowledge and the values of the indian tradition art and ethos so that is what they are expecting from this integrated four year integrated b ed course and then as i told you a four year integrated b ed will be uh, the what uh, the minimum requirement degree requirement for the uh, students uh, the people who are seeking a, a, a teachers position in the uh, by 2030 so this is the essential requirement okay and uh, so then the question that arises is there are there is a possibility that at third year itself the candidate can come out and you will be awarded degree and what about for them so for that what these people what nep 2020 says is uh, the institutes which are offering a four year integrated b.ed program no and they should also design a program that is two year b.ed program for such people those guys who are completing the after completing three years if they come out with a bachelor degree they should be in a position to do two year b.ed program so as to compensate uh, that okay so this is what they say and in this higher education the teacher student uh, ratio should be for every one teacher there should be either tw uh, 10 to 20 uh, students that depends upon the program this is what it says in national educational policy 2020 as multidisciplinary meru becomes a reality in the future then what will happen to the stand alone uh, uh, institutes like uh, professional institutes so they say that by 2030 all should become uh, multidisciplinary institutions or universities so no standalone universities or institutions regarding the agriculture uh, and uh, allied subjects right uh, they the number of uh, candidates who are coming out of that are to be increased and uh, they have to be uh, good uh, technicians and uh, skilled graduates and they should help in uh, the agriculture productivity they have to increase the agriculture productivity and also they have to do the research and see that market based uh, practices are been implemented and then uh, another important aspect uh, for this is agriculture technology parks are to be promoted uh, so as to promote technology incubation and dissemination of the technology to the farmers and agriculture sector so this is very important uh, that is what they feel and they uh, regarding the legal education and they say that it will be uh, restructured to become globally competitive so legal uh, lawyers or advocates will be should be uh, globally competitive and adopting uh, that will be restructured by adopting the best practices and embracing new technologies so let like new technologies like uh, uh, data analysis uh, uh, artificial intelligence etc etc uh, so that they can uh, easily uh, access the law, uh, law uh, the technology and uh, uh, the education so that timely delivery of justice has been done right so this is what they are emphasizing on next in the health sector right the roles of the graduates are to be re-envisioned regarding the duration structure and design of the educational program so that need to be done they have seen and uh, uh, quality of the nursing education will be improved and uh, there will be uh, accreditation body for the uh, nursing program and another th very important aspect is all students of allopathic medical education must have basics of uh, Ayush, that is uh, Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha, Siddha and uh, 
homeopathy and vice versa these students should know allopathic medicine so that uh, that basic knowledge has to be there and also they emphasize that uh, all should give importance to the preventive health and community medicine uh, in the uh, health sector so the Irish people how they react to this they are to so, uh, to them uh, it is to decide because uh, they are each uh, stream each method has its own way of addressing the uh, what uh, diseases and the treatment uh, next uh, as i told you right there is no uh, standalone universities no there will not be any standalone universities uh, specific university like health university technical universities or institutions will be permitted in the future right this is what the professional education is in technical education sector right they have included uh, uh, degree and diploma of courses in engineering technology management uh, management architecture town planning pharmacy hotel management and catering and uh, say that these sectors many of these sectors are very very critical for the development of uh, india so india's development depends upon the development which is happening here and uh, this will continue to uh, prosper and uh, they uh, say that the demand for well educated well qualified uh, graduates from these areas are very much needed for the growth of this country and in the case of uh, in this regard they expect more and more industry institute participation so innovation and research do happen with the collaboration of the industries with the institutions they encourage this to happen and that has to be multidisciplinary right so that is what they are expecting and in the and at the same lights they expect the uh, curricula to be renewed uh, so that the opportunities and uh, opportunities are to be grabbed and engage deeply in uh, the very promising technologies like uh, uh, artificial intelligence, 3D machining, big data analysis, machine learning. So all these are to be uh, taken care of. These opportunities have to be grabbed and engage deeply in this and India must take a lead in this sector because India being uh, one of the major country in the uh, software sector. So they want this to, to happen in a big way so that they can engage deeply into it and uh, not only on the uh, this uh, technical education, even in the other technical educations like genomic studies, biotechnology, and nanotechnology and neurosciences uh, this uh, our Indian community and diaspora has to make use of this and engage themselves deeply so that we can be the global leaders in this area so when they say that we should be the global leaders in the technological sector then what should be the research investment which are been made here in this India and also in other countries let us see that so let what are the research at higher education institutions so here at present uh, research and innovation uh, in investment in India is only about 0.69 percent of a GDP so 3 percent GDP is for the education and that 0.69 uh, percent 69 percent is uh, on the research and innovation so whereas in other countries if you compare this with other countries uh, United States is uh, uh, spending 2.8% of their GDP, China is 2.1% of their GDP, Israel is 4.3% of their GDP and uh, South Korea, uh, Korea is 4.2% of the GDP. Many of our graduates and postgraduates and uh, uh, PhD holders are working for the South Korean companies and, uh, and making them to prosper. So instead of that, why can't we do that? So that is their intentions in that theory. Um, uh, policy right to so the policy have to be increased have to be modified so what they are telling is they will be framing national research foundation so this uh, foundation is going to come up so the present uh, departments which are funding are dst the department of science and technology ugc act so instead of that all go and instead of that our national research foundation will come up that is nrf in the us it is N, uh, national science foundation is there so in that manner uh, in that uh, way we will be having n national research foundation and uh, see that there will be quantum jump in funding uh, and uh, support for the research right this is what they are in nfc aging so they are seeing that there will be a quantum jump in the support that will be get there for the all the higher education institutions so if this happens definitely good so then what to what extent is now at present it is 0.69 percent to what extent they said that it is up to two percent so if this happens good so quite good it is almost three times of what it is uh, there at present so if this happens then there definitely there will be more amount of uh, research and the uh, development 
which is happening in this country and then like, another thing is so uh, such means there will be phd graduates right so in the uh, in the, the pursuit of uh, getting the doctor of philosophy they do a lot of research and in this course also in this phd also they see that they are also to be trained in education pedagogy the method of teaching to be known to them those students right so at present there is no these phd students need not have to do any b ed program to take up the teaching profession but they say that even the phd graduates should be uh, aware of this right so that in that uh, doctoral program they have to take a credit based teaching or education or pedagogy uh, course so that they will be well equipped to teach the course teach the subject in the colleges and at the same time there should be minimum number of hours of uh, teaching uh, during their phd program so that they have to do as a uh, teaching assistants uh, and by that they can gain the a teaching experience so they should be aware of the pedagogy that is methodology of teaching and also they should have the experience while doing the phd that is what they are emphasizing uh, in in this field and then um, at the same time they are encouraging our indian university to uh, universities to set up their campuses in other countries as well and that is they are promoting it in fact already some of the universities private universities are there in the middle east countries that is there and if you are going outside then the outsiders will also come right they are encouraging top 100 uh, universities uh, top 100 universities to come and set up their branches here in india so this may lead to some kind of uh, uh, disparity because top of 100 university when it comes to india definitely they don't offer the courses at a very cheap rate a very uh, uh, nominal rate so definitely they are they have their own uh, uh, methodology their own uh, what to pay up what to fee structure so that has to be seen how it works out for the people regarding the master degree program and it is again a multidisciplinary and the flexibility will be there for in it and uh, this uh, master degree program would be for 2 years for the students who have completed 3 uh, years at that bachelor degree and in the 2 2 years master program second year will be devoted completely for the research and it will be only one year master degree program program for the uh, students who have completed uh, four year bachelor programs with research as the fourth year subject so this is about uh, the duration uh, of this and then uh, there will be there has to be integrated five year bachelor and master program and in fact it is already there in uh, some of the universities so even in the institute it is there in the indian institute of science it is there integrated bachelor and master program five years program is there and uh, then uh, by phd for the to enter into the phd the eligibility criteria is either master degree or even four year bachelor degree with research is sufficient so not necessary to have the master degree so four years bachelors with research is sufficient to get into the phd and the mphil is totally uh, discontinued in fact it is not been used for many years right so this is about the masters uh, programs which will be there in higher education institutions okay sir this uh, looks more uh, idealistic and then how this how you make this to happen how you make this to happen is the question so for that uh, mhrd minister of human resources and uh, development will be named as a ministry of education and the minister is called as mhrd minister is called as minister of education and in the apex body called rashtriya shiksha ayog will be constituted and uh, this will be headed by the minister of education and uh, this under this rashtriya shiksha ayog there will be 30 member committee and that 30 member expert committee two third that means uh, 20 uh, persons will be from the different area of art science business business health agriculture and social work maybe from the india or uh, for uh, people from indian origin can be there in, in this 20 member committee and remaining 10 are the ministers from different departments and the uh, bureaucracy will be there so they are the people rashtriya shiksha ayog is the apex body of india and that will replace the present central advisory board of education so their role is what is the main role of this uh, rashtriya shiksha ayog that is they will develop they will be responsible for developing articulating evaluating the and revising the vision of india so they are they will see what the vision has to be there for the india in the country and and it has to be continuous and sustained basis so it will not be one time affair it has to be continuous and sustained affairs and this will be in close collaboration with corresponding apex bodies of the states so then what is the apex body of the states apex bodies of the states uh, is 
ರಾಜ್ಯ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಆಯೋಗ ಆರ್ ಜೆ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಆಯೋಗ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಆಯೋಗ ವಿಲ್ ಹಾವ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ವಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿಯೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿಯೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಆಯೋಗ ಅಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹಾವ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಟೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅಗೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಿನಿನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಚೂಸನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹಾವ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಶಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹಾವ್ ದ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದ ವಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅನ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹಾವ್ ಅ ಟೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ರಿನ್ಯೂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅನದರ್ ವನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವಿಚ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಸೀನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ along akin to ias and ips there will be another uh, cater that is going to come up that is indian education uh, services this is to uh, strengthen the bureaucracy so like similar to ias and ips right they are uh, they will be having ies that is indian education service so now the question is how you increase the gdp to 6% though it is recommended in the year 1968 that was uh, in the 1968 when the first education policy was uh, introduced by ms indra gandhi the very important thing is how you can reach to 6% immediately and 20% in 10 years duration this is most important if this is achieved then india becomes the number one country in the world so there is no doubt that if 20% of gdp is spent uh, you know 10 years time then uh, i mean uh, by 10 year, in 10 years right if if the gdp expenditure on education becomes 20% definitely this will become a number one country in the world the main important one is accountability of the system accountability of the teachers accountability of the institutions so who is responsible what is accountability what transparency that will be maintained in the system that is most important at the same time nothing has been told about the funding what is that funding who will give the funding for the institution who will run it let us see that so nep says that all higher educational institutions in india must aim to become independent self governing institutions pursuing innovation and excellence they have to do the research they have to do the innovation or innovative work and they have to excel on their own they have to be self governed they have to be they have to generate their own uh, revenue so the revenue that has been generated has to, has to be spent on the system so that they can excel in the educations that is what the, the nep 2020 says irrespective of the uh, institution whether it is a government or the private all are same they have to be uh, uh, self reliant so if that is the case when money is involved in it then who is responsible how can you fix the accountability and how can you know that it is transparent so for that there will be board of governors for each institutions each institutions will have a board of governors and that has to be constituted by the institute itself and these board of governors will uh, take care of this right then who are these board of governors the board of governors will be from the community and they are from the local uh, community and they will be uh, con- that will be consisting of highly qualified quant- uh, competent dedicated individuals having proven capabilities and strong sense of commitment to the institution and education so they, are, they will be there in this board of uh, governors and they are held responsible for what are happening in the education institutions and at the same time they should not be or they will not be uh, influenced by either political or other external interference they have to the board of governors will be in in that manner they will be working in that manner and their role is to constitute and upon, uh, constitute the system and that uh, they can make uh, the appointment this board of governors will do the appointment modal- modalities of functioning they'll set the rules and regulations for the system and also rules of each individuals so that is okay then what about other things other thing is they are the people they are the board of governors are responsible for meeting all regulatory guidelines mandated by nehra nehra is national higher education regulatory authority this regulation authority will be set up and that will put forth certain regulations that has, that are to be met by this board of governors okay that they will meet the regulations then what about the transparency how can you know that so for that they will make the uh, what uh, 
institutional development plan so this board of governors will make the institution development plan and they plan and they appoint the head and the this head uh, head will be appointed by the board of governors has to make this vision to happen right so vision of the institution vision of the governors and institutional development plan which has been developed by uh, constituted or developed by bog has to be made to action put to action by the head of the institution okay that is right and at the same time this bog will see that ensure that there will be transparency in, uh, transparency in the uh, for, for faculty recruitment that uh, that uh, has to be seen and then most important thing is when it money comes into the picture see that it will not have a commercialization of education so the commercialization should not happen so that has to be ensured how they ensure it right so board of governors of the higher education uh, institutions will be held accountable for not being a commercial entity they have they are the person who have to see that this institution will not run for the profit it is a non profit or not for profit entity it is not a, um, we are not selling it here it is only a educational institution it is not for profit that is what has to be ensured by this governors how do they do this how do they do it means they will be uh, people will be responsible for the development of the institutions and whatever the outcomes for that this board of governors are responsible and at the same time they have to disclose they have to make the disclosures of all the relevant documents pertaining to the admissions or funding and all the expenditures which are been made for that board of governors how to place the uh, all the records in place and then disclose the relevant documents or records so by that they can keep up the transparency and they are uh, they will be fixed as an accountable body uh, for this system so this is what this nap 2020 says yes there are many things many the new things which have been introduced there are money money involved in it so without money no nothing can move forward but that has to be accountable and also it has to be transparent so with this i hope this nep 2020 will be a eye opener and also a game changer in the education sector education system of our india it has come after 28 years i hope this will make a very um, bright uh, uh, future for our country so with this uh, anticipation and expectations i am signing off from this video i am dr kumar thank you very much for nice hearing